Hey everyone, today Paul shows us how to deal with conflict. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you, my loyal companion, help these women, for they struggled beside me in, my, in the ministry of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. So here we're actually seeing one of the only problems in Philippi is church conflict, something that happens from the beginning and still happens today. And so he mentions these two women, Yodia and Syntyche, who are actually church leaders. Right? He says they're co-workers of his, they've struggled in his ministry for the gospel. And so when leadership, like these ladies, when they're fighting, that's going to affect the whole church. And so Paul is saying this is a place where they need to work out the mind of Christ, one of these big themes through the letter. And again, like I said, it's not thinking the same thing, but thinking the same way. And he has lots of little instructions here, right? Rejoice always, don't be anxious. Those, you know, they're kind of like buffer stickers, so they can easily be misused. But when he says all that, that doesn't remove the need for really addressing concerns or things that have gone wrong. Um, and in fact, sometimes we could take that to use as uh, making a false sort of peace, right? The, just everything's fine. Let's not worry about it. Let's not talk about all this stuff. And so we actually end up not resolving conflicts. So this is where Paul's advice about thinking on good things actually comes in. It's not just about general optimism and, oh, just notice all the flowers and the pretty things. It's not a bad message, but I don't think that's what he's really saying. What he's saying is focus on the good in other people, whatever is excellent, worthy of praise, in someone else. It's actually a, a verse that we use in our wedding. I have it engraved inside my wedding ring. Because in that sort of relationship, in any relationship, it's really easy to focus on the negative in that other person, especially when you're in conflict. We tend to assume the best about ourselves and the worst about others. And so when you're in conflict, ask, what is good about this person? What is excellent about them? What is lovely? It may be hard, but it's still there. Or ask, are they doing this because they just want to hurt me or hurt someone else? Are they doing it because they think that's what's best, even if I think that's misguided? I think reframing these conflicts in that way, the way that we see other people, can really change the way that we address our differences. This peace of God, it is bigger than what we can understand. It's a gift. As I've said so many times through this series, but we can most easily see that gift. I can see that gift in you when I see the good in you.